Kenny Omega is a professional wrestler enjoying a successful career in Japan, where he has won a number of championship bouts. He goes flying over the ropes and uses his well-conditioned physique to unleash dramatic power moves. Kenny trains every day to hone his speed and power. But he is also a big fan of Japan's popular culture. He pursues this interest on days off, when he goes looking for video games and anime-related merchandise. He even uses pop culture motifs in the wrestling ring. Today we look at Kenny Omega, a unique Japanophile pro wrestling star, and his love of Japanese subculture. Hello and welcome to Green Japanology, I'm Peter Baraka. Today we present another of our Japanophile profiles. I'm in a pro wrestling venue that doubles temporarily as a beer garden. In Japan, you'll find beer gardens all over the country during the summer months. This one, you can actually watch wrestling bouts as you drink your beer. So let me move straight on and welcome our guest for today. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome in the red corner, Canada's king of the streets, Mr. Kenny Omega. Woo! Yeah, it's Keith now, baby. OK, Keith, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, let's start this thing off. <laughs> start off with a handshake. <laughs> Great to meet you. I thought I was going to get bounced out of the No, ring. no, no, no. <laughs> We're good buddies. We're good buddies, yeah. Japan is one of the world's big three professional wrestling countries. Pro wrestling fans flock to arenas. But the company representing Kenny, his promotion, also takes wrestling out to some pretty unusual locations, including campgrounds in the woods, pubs, and many other places. You don't even have to wrestle an actual human. This bout is against a dummy. And here a stepladder is the opponent. But even in the anything goes world of Japanese professional wrestling, Kenny's style stands out. He brings motifs from video games and anime into his wrestling. His ring name comes from the toughest character in a role-playing game, Omega Weapon. He enters the ring to a tune from his favorite video game. The logo on his trunks looks just like the title of a famous manga, Initial D. Kenny's fashion is inspired by pop culture, and so is his wrestling. A fighting game popular worldwide features the killer move Hadouken. It's an energy blast released by thrusting both hands forward. Kenny does the Hadouken. There's no actual energy blast, but it's still ferocious. Here's a pro wrestler character that appears in the same video game. His final atomic buster move sees him fly up high and execute a spinning pile driver. It can dispose of an opponent at a single stroke. Here's how it looks when Kenny does his version. But he can only use it on dummies, not people. Kenny's pro wrestling incorporates various elements from the Japanese anime and the games that he loves. After a bout, he addresses the audience in smooth Japanese. Kenny Omega, wrestler and subculture geek, has become a fixture of the Japanese pro wrestling scene. This is Omega. Obviously, you made the effort to learn quite a lot of Japanese as well. In the video oh, yeah. just now, towards the end, we saw you 
there up in the ring talking on the mic in Japanese. Oh, yeah. And we've got all these comic books here. Yeah. I, I started my favorite anime of all time here is uh, Hajime no Ippo. And I started watching the anime. Uh -huh. But they only syndicated a select amount of episodes. And I love the story so much, I wanted it to continue. And there's no other way to do it except for reading the mangas. It's the only way, because the mangas go so much further than what the anime had. So if you want to know, you know, it's an extra incentive to continue learning. So of course, I'm going to try whatever I can to continue. And uh, yeah, if you, have a, if you have an interest in it, I think you feel an interest or a need. You're Something gonna, that motivates you. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, motivation or if, you just, if it's do or die. Mm. You know, you, you'll find yourself doing things you never dreamed of yourself doing. Mm. Mm. I guess everybody knows that pro wrestling, to an extent, is scripted, and I don't want you to give away too many mm. trade secrets or anything, but when you're fighting about, yeah. um, how much of it is improvised? I mean, you, you'll have a set of uh, motions that you're going to go through. Will you suddenly throw something in? How does that kind of work? Right. It's, uh, it's all case by case, of course. And mm. um, I think that's part of my style is to really be explosive and unpredictable. Hmm. I have very original movements, and I, I do that purposely so that it doesn't look scripted, and okay. so that it's really sort of original, spur-of-the-moment movements. Well, it's interesting that you come here in the first place because, I mean, pro wrestling obviously is a worldwide sport. Yeah. But I would imagine that North America must be far and away the biggest market for it. What would make you come to Japan to do this here? Um, they're more controlling in the States. Mm. I, I was once with the, the world's biggest promotion, in, and that's WWE in America. And uh, that's heavily scripted. And a lot of the times, they want to have control over your person. So mm. they'll give you a new name, a new persona. They have people scripting your movements, what you do, what you say. And I felt that if I'm going to be something original, wow. and if I want to show my personality, mm. I've got to go somewhere where that's going to be appreciated. And what better place than here, where everyone is expressing themselves in so many different ways. So Japan is less controlled altogether, is it? It's, it's not really controlled at all. I'm a free to be who I want to be. And oh, really? Yeah, so the, the Kenny Omega that you see is, is really 100% me. It's, it's not really an act. It's just, it's just me doing what I do. I know there are lots of people in Japan who do that. They just go, go out in the ring and they are themselves. Yeah, I'm, uh, I would say for a lot of the Japanese wrestlers out here, they're living the dream. Hmm. Um, just like with any job here in Japan that I notice, people devote themselves 100% to what they do. Hmm. And it's not a hobby for people that wrestle out in Japan. It's their dream and it's their life. So when you put that kind of time and when you put your heart and soul into something, you're going to put yourself out there to the world. So I'm kind of amongst an entire culture of people that are, are giving themselves to the world. So if, if I don't give myself my true self, then I'm just going to be one of those guys that show up to Japan once, and you'll never see me ever again. I thought I should keep it real and, and, hmm. and take it as far as I could go. Kenny Omega's real name is Tyson Smith. He was born in Winnipeg, Canada in 1983. As a teenager, he just loved anime and video games. When a friend told him these favorites were Japanese creations, Kenny realized he was a Japanophile. He made his pro wrestling debut in his native Canada in 2002. He went on to appear in rings in the USA and around the world. In 2006, he started thinking about wrestling in Japan after a friend showed him a video of the Japanese promotion Dramatic Dream Team, or DDT. He saw Kota Ibushi, who was about the same age, going crazy outside the confines of the ring. Kenny was captivated and decided he just had to fight Ibushi. So Kenny filmed himself wrestling in the DDT sound and uploaded it on YouTube. He also issued a video challenge to Ibushi. This all-out PR blitz paid off and he was invited to take part in a bout in Japan. Because Ibushi, I'm the next top ROH star, not you. The way he went about approaching us was really unusual. And when he actually got here, he turned out to be just as good as we'd hoped. 
Kenny finally made it to Japan in 2008, and his date with destiny took place in an arena transformed into a beer garden. He raised hell inside and outside the ring, but eventually, Ibushi prevailed. Even in defeat, though, Kenny Omega captured the hearts of Japanese fans and ended up relocating to Rest Japan. Kenny gives every challenge 100% wherever he's fighting. He doesn't think twice about wrestling a dummy to pump up the audience. Kenny and Ibushi have won championships as a tag team, and he is now one of DDT's featured wrestlers. I thought it was really interesting that you used YouTube to get yourself noticed, a very 21st century way of doing yeah, things. Yeah, I mean, I was sort of the YouTube boom. Now, you sent that to DDT specifically? Specifically, yeah, because uh, I had wanted to have a match against their, their best wrestler, Kota Ibushi. Uh, okay, so you knew of him from when you were in Canada? Yes. I had wanted to go to Japan, and I had sort of felt like anywhere that I had went, no one really grasped my view and my, my vision of what wrestling needs to become. Hmm. Until I saw Ibushi from DDT, and I thought, he must think the same way that I do. He's doing the same crazy things that I'm doing. Hmm. He's, you know, super athletic. And, and, you know, he's not afraid to make people laugh. A lot of people are afraid to make themselves laugh. They're too prideful, you know, about mm. looking tough. And, mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't seem to be that kind of guy. But he is tough. So I felt like, you know, whoever this guy is, I feel like I need to meet him. I need to challenge him. And, you know, let's, let's make some magic together in the ring. You know, whether it be together as partners or against each other. You know, I felt that my destiny if there is such a thing, was, was to come out here and, and fight Kota Ibushi. Hmm. Which obviously worked out. I mean, did DDT say yes to you immediately after they saw the YouTube clip? Yeah, they were ecstatic. They offered for me to come out uh, during the summer. Hmm. And during that summer, I got my main event with Ibushi, which is still one of my favorite matches of all time. And uh, hmm. that match, uh, strangely enough, won match of the year that year. Wow. And kind of uh, solidified my position within the company. It was the beginning steps of, you know, five years that brings us to today hmm. at this table. And it's, it's an all-inclusive setup, is it, at this table? They, they provide you with a place to live and everything? Yeah. Um, at that time, we had a dormitory in, in Nipori. And Which is a pretty kind of working-class area. Right, Tokyo. it was, You, you don't yeah. expect most visiting foreigners to be living in a place yeah. like that. It wasn't what I expected. I, you know, you hear Tokyo, if you haven't been to Japan, you just think like big neon lights, you know, Godzilla, you know, uh, <laughs> you, you, know what I mean, you know what I mean, you know. <laughs> sure. That's what I pictured. Um, but you know, in Nippori, it's just very old style. Yeah. Everything's very old and I'd never really seen any young people. And uh, hmm. yeah, they do, I don't think they saw many foreigners either. Every time I would walk to the, the convenience store, you know, Heads I'm, would turn. They, yeah, they would, they would turn, they literally turn and walk to the opposite direction of, this, of the street. Oh, really? People would avoid you? They would, it seemed like they would avoid me. I, I, you know, I'd kind of do like, <laughs> like well, what's, what's wrong with me? You know what I mean? I, I'd look in the mirror like, you know, it's something, what's going on? I knew I looked kind of strange with my curly hair and, you know, but it's just, I worried that I was scary, you know? Mm. Or that the way I was, you know, the clothes that I was wearing or the way, I wasn't sure what it was, and, you know, eventually I'd found that Japanese people are, are so helpful. They want to help, you know, whenever they can, and they're very polite and uh, very good-natured. And I think the problem was is that, you know, these, these senior citizens, had I had a problem not speaking Japanese, they would have wanted to help, but they couldn't help. And they uh -huh. just didn't want to be in that position, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's like, I, I can't speak English and I'm, you know, I, I'm sorry, but I can't help you kind of thing. Mm -hmm. After yeah, people would cross the road one too many times, I started to feel very lonely and sad. I would start to mm. go to the convenience store and, and just, you know, buy my melon buns and, you know, <laughs> and, and speak with actually the convenience store staff. And that was sort of the way that I would, would pass time in my off time. Mm. And You've I, been here five years now? Five years. Have you found that people have stopped crossing the road when you come along now? 
No, you know, it still I, happens. I, I feel like I feel like they wouldn't pee on me if I was on fire. You know, no. I, like I feel like I'm just I've melded into their culture now. Okay. It's like somehow they know that I know what I'm doing. I mean, before even you know, you walk in Shinjuku and you have uh, you know the 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 big dark fellas telling you to go to my club or hey yeah. man, what's up? You know, uh -huh. now they they. They somehow know that I'm not a tourist, and uh -huh. they leave me alone. It's, it's, it's funny you say that. I, the first time I yeah. realized that I had melded into the society was when I was walking along the street, yep. and an old Japanese lady yeah. came up and asked me for directions in wow. Japanese. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of that, too, now. I mean, it's, for example, you know, uh, an old woman the other day, she couldn't open up her, uh, her water bottle, so she had asked me for help, of course, in Japanese. And... Uh, I don't know, somehow it, it made me really happy to help for one, mm. but it made me really happy that somehow my appearance keyed her in, that I knew what I was doing. I don't think my, the way I walk changed or anything, but something, you I don't know. It exuded something. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, was, it made me ecstatic. I was so happy to just, yeah, to help and, and be a part to be accepted by, you know, the, the senior citizen culture in, in Japan. Right. Kenny lives in Katsushika Ward in the east of Tokyo. It's a typical old-fashioned part of town. Right outside the local station is a long shopping arcade, and Kenny often strolls along it. Yeah, it's a real easy place to live. I mean, you just take a walk down the street, and anything you want, anything you need is here. Yeah, you know, we got drug stores, places to buy fresh fish, fresh food. After his walk, he heads on to Kasai Rinkai Park by Tokyo Bay. This is where he works out. Naksama, what is up? <laughs> what is up? Yep. Yeah. We're here in nature. Kenny's workout partner is another wrestler from the same promotion, Michael Nakazawa, who has also served as Kenny's interpreter ever since he came to Japan. Kenny comes from a country with a beautiful natural environment, and he likes doing workouts in a natural setting. Ten lifts with a 40 kilogram barbell. Then a sprint with 10 kilogram weights in each hand. At the finish line, 10 curls with 20 kilogram dumbbells. It's this dogged physical training that gives Kenny the power and speed to perform his cartoon-inspired wrestling moves. A fan spots Kenny working out and approaches him. Oh, Kenny's a vital part of the pro wrestling scene. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny is happy to give him his autograph. <laughs> Next, Kenny and Michael head for Akihabara, Tokyo's sanctuary for all fans of Japanese subculture. Kenny has been here countless times since moving to Japan. He's a regular at this shop dealing in older video games. He says he once spent 50,000 yen in a single visit. We never released Mother in America or Canada, so when I first played Mother 1, I had to play it in Japanese. So I had to learn hiragana and katakana. There was no kanji, so it was kind of easy level of Japanese. The wall is lined with video games. One of these games might inspire his next signature move. He winds up the day at his favorite bar. <laughs> Hi, Kenny. Good to see you. How are you? Thank you. <laughs> he got to know the proprietress, Tokiko Ando, soon after arriving in Japan. Ando's daughter and son-in-law work in pro wrestling in the United States. They asked her to help Kenny to get settled in Japan. <laughs> First, I bought him a mobile phone, a prepaid one, as he's in Canada sometimes and doesn't always need it, and I told him to come by any time. 
even though I'm, she didn't know me that well. Mm -hmm. She treated me like I was one of her children. Yeah. It was unbelievable. So, mm. Spending time with people he knows well helps Kenny to cope with the fatigue of constant wrestling. And that's a day in the life of the geek wrestler Kenny Omega. How does a typical week for you break down these days? I'd wake up very early in the morning. I would eat my breakfast. And while I'm eating my breakfast, I would, I would watch something inspirational, something to get my butt out of bed. Usually that has something to do with like cartoons or superheroes. Okay. That's just, you know, that's where I draw my inspiration from, are these fictional characters that really stand for what's right in the world. Because that's, you know, what I kind of want to do. And, you know, I'm you know, eating. And uh, that kind of gets my stomach in the mood for working out. I'll train with however much time I have. And then from there, it's the bus. And then from the bus, we're traveling to some place to do a match. Then we do the match. And then from the match, it's some sort of event. And then from the event, you're arriving in the wee hours of the night to sleep for a couple hours to wake up to take the bus. And then it goes from there. Wow. Yeah. And okay. then, uh, you know, if you can, I like to train more than once a day if I can. Mm. So I'm always kind of trying to like squeeze in like my weight training, mm. uh, maybe before the show or after the show. And then to also squeeze in in between eating the right kinds of foods. And it's difficult, but that has been my lifestyle up until today. So there'll be a match almost every day? Almost every day. Wow. Yeah. Do people get hurt a lot? All the time. Uh -huh. All the time. But I mean, it's the nature of the beasts. People get, sure. you know, people get hurt. Sure. We all chose to be a part of the sport, mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Whether it's an accident or, or not, you know, just part of the match, um, these things happen. Um, what do you think it is in Japanese society that produces a scene of this quality? I think there's, there's, a different, there's different styles in wrestling. And I think pro wrestling became a legitimate martial art in the sense where you could use it in a fight and you could win. Uh -huh. And uh, I mean, even in mixed martial arts today, which is you know very popular worldwide, people still represent pro wrestling style and they still win a lot of fights. Mm. Um, and uh, I think with DDT, uh, I think with DDT is that they take the fundamentals of strong style and they use various references in pop culture and whatever they can find that they think will be entertaining and they turn it into something that's not always just serious but fun i think mm. all of us have a you know they have a soft spot in their heart for the things they grew up with as a child mm. especially our president um sanshiro takagi i mean he loves gundam he made a gundam suit for himself to wrestle in <laughs> and he's had you know various alter egos uh. you know to do with ways where he could just dress up and have fun um he's you know secretly wanted to be a gravure model you know so he's he he's not afraid to voice the crazy things that he in his interests in wrestling hmm. and uh i mean aside from just the president himself ddt kind of has this open policy where if there is a statement you want to make just go ahead and make it Hmm. And it turns out that we just have this real wide open product where, you know, uh, any any chap from the street could show up and, and take something that they like from it. They'll find something funny or they'll find something interesting. If you like Gundam, you know, we have Takagi dressing up in a Gundam suit. Everybody knows Gundam. Everyone knows anime. So, I mean, you know, the people like video games, you know, you have me doing a Hadouken all the time. There's something that people can connect with. And uh, I think that's what's important. It's not everybody always just wants to go to a wrestling show and watch wrestling. They want to have like a tether mm. to their youth or to reality or mm. to a, an alternate reality maybe. And I think DDT does a really good job of branching out in so many different directions where everybody will find something that they like. I think that's been their secret to their success. And the last question on this program is always the same. What is Japan to you? Uh, to me, Japan is kind of like, kind of like a key to unlocking, I guess, the real me. I'd always loved Japanese culture and, uh, you know, Japanese games, anime, manga. But, I, I, you know, I had humble dreams. And I never really 
had an expectation of myself to do anything special. And, you know, as it turned out, I had this one match with Ibushi, and it opened up this world. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud to say that Japan is my place of work and my home, and that a lot of my good friends and, you know, the family by blood, but family nonetheless, mm -hmm. are, are here in this country. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. It was the fighting of Kota Ibushi that first made Kenny interested in Japanese pro wrestling. In tag team bouts, they are partners who respect each other's skill. Outside the ring, they're the best of friends. But Kenny has yet to defeat Ibushi in a one-on-one -on -one bout. Since they fought four years ago, Ibushi has grown into a formidable wrestler and the face of DDT. August the 18th, 2012. At long last, Kenny has a shot at revenge. His bout with Ibushi is billed as today's main event. Kenny is fighting to knock Ibushi off the DDT throne. Just as the fans had hoped, it's a ferocious battle from round one. After flashy moves by both wrestlers, the bout builds to a climax. Has Kenny got him now? But at the last moment, Ibushi struggles free. Kenny can't hide his astonishment at Ibushi's strength. Ibushi unleashes his ultimate move on a bewildered Kenny. Kenny manages to free himself just before the three count. But Ibushi goes on to deliver the coup de grace. The Japan quest continues for Canadian pro wrestler Kenny Omega. Strawberries have been Japan's favorite fruit for a quarter of a century, and now the world is learning why. We examine the fascinating history and future potential of this fantastic food.